All right. Good afternoon, everyone. The Secretary General is on an official visit to Oman, and he's authorized me to say the following statement. The Secretary General is appalled by the escalation of military activity in and around Rafah by the Israeli Defense Forces. These developments are further impeding humanitarian access and worsening an already dire situation. At the same time, Hamas goes on firing rockets indiscriminately. Civilians must be respected and protected at all times in Rafah and elsewhere in Gaza. For people in Gaza, nowhere is safe now. The Secretary General reiterates his urgent appeal for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and for the release of all hostages. He calls for the Rafah crossing to be reopened immediately, and we must have unimpeded humanitarian access throughout Gaza. Uh, that statement will be issued shortly. The Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Martin Griffiths, said in a social media post that parties must take all feasible precautions to spare civilians, including UN personnel and humanitarian workers, after one UN staff member was killed and another injured yesterday when their vehicle was hit en route to the uh, European hospital in Rafah. The UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East reports that families continue to flee Rafah in search of safety. The agency estimates that as of yesterday, nearly 450,000 people had been displaced from Rafah in the last week. UNRWA says families are fleeing wherever they can, including to rubble and sand dunes. As we have said repeatedly, all parties must respect international humanitarian law at all times. This means that civilians must be protected and their, uh, their essential needs, including food, shelter, water, and health, must be met wherever they are in Gaza and whether they move or stay. The families being displaced from Rafah are arriving at sites that lack shelter, latrines, and water points. However, it is impossible to improve the situation at displacement sites if supplies can't enter Gaza and if we lack the fuel to transport them inside Gaza to the families who need them. Despite that, efforts are ongoing to deliver life-saving assistance wherever and whenever possible. Our humanitarian partners report that work continues to restore health services at Nasser Medical Complex in Khan Yunus, which is expected to formally reopen in the coming days. The hospital already started providing hemodialysis treatment last week to patients who can no longer be treated at An Najjar Hospital in Rafah, which has ceased providing services. Meanwhile, our colleagues in the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs say that yesterday in the West Bank, Israeli settlers attacked aid trucks bound for Gaza. The settlers offloaded and vandalized the vehicles at the Tarkamiya checkpoint and near the barrier by Betawa. Several trucks were damaged. Israel must protect against violence by Israeli settlers and ensure that all allegations of settler violence are investigated and the perpetrators are prosecuted. Uh, like I just said, the Secretary General is currently in Muscat, Oman. Upon his arrival last night, he met with Sheikh Khalifa al harti the Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Sultanate of Oman. During his official visit, the Secretary General is expected to hold discussions on Wednesday with His Majesty Sultan Haitam bin Tariq and a meeting with the Foreign Minister, Said Badr bin Hamad bin Hamoud al-Busaidi, is also expected to take place tomorrow but before he departs to Bahrain for the Arab Summit. While in Manama, as we mentioned to you previously, the Secretary General will deliver remarks to the summit, and he's expected to have several bilateral meetings with leaders attending the summit. Discussions will mainly focus on the situation in Gaza and the wider region. We'll keep updating you on the Secretary General's schedule along the way. And just for the record, we issued a statement last night in which the Secretary General expressed his grave concerns by the outbreak of fighting in El Fasher, the capital of North Darfur. He urged the parties to immediately stop the fighting and resume ceasefire negotiations without further delay. The Secretary General is alarmed by reports of the use of heavy weaponry in densely populated areas, resulting in dozens of civilian casualties, significant displacement, and the destruction of civilian infrastructure. He recalls that civilians in the area are already facing a looming famine and the consequences of over a year of war, and this fighting puts over 800,000 civilians at risk. The Secretary General reminds all parties of their obligation <laughs> under international humanitarian law to protect civilians. He also requests that all parties facilitate safe, rapid, and unimpeded humanitarian access to all civilians in need in El Fasher, across Darfur, and Sudan. And tomorrow I will be joined in this room by the resident and humanitarian coordinator for Sudan, 
Clementine Anquita Salami. She will provide you with more details on the humanitarian situation in the country. Turning now to South Sudan, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs reports that more than an estimated 7 million people in the country are likely to experience high levels of food insecurity through July. According to OCHA's latest report, at least 79,000 people are at risk of catastrophic levels of hunger, mostly in locations affected by conflict, economic crisis, and climate-related shocks. Our humanitarian partners are also mobilizing support for people displaced by intercommunal fighting in Tamburest County in western Equatoria. An estimated 26,000 people have fled so far, and most residential areas around Tambura town are deserted. For their part, our peacekeeping colleagues are closely monitoring the situation in Tambura. To deter further violence, the UN mission in South Sudan had immediately deployed additional peacekeepers to reinforce the site. The mission reports that they have also tripled the number of daily patrols. Currently, about 200 Blue Helmets are conducting daily patrols to provide security to the local population. Our colleagues at South Sudan also continue to engage with community leaders and political parties at the national and local levels to peacefully resolve any issues and resolve and reduce intercommunal tensions. Meanwhile, the influx of returnees and refugees from the conflict in Sudan continues to strain already limited services at border points and in host communities. Since the war in Sudan began in April of last year, at least 670,000 new arrivals have been registered in South Sudan, 80% of them returnees. And just to flag that this year's humanitarian appeal for the country remains severely un underfunded, which is challenging response efforts. Just 11% of the $1.8 billion required has been received to date, some $195 million. From Haiti, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs has an update about the impact of the attack by armed groups that we mentioned yesterday. It took place in Gracier, south of the capital, Port-au-Prince. According to the first assessments conducted by humanitarian organizations, the May 10th attacks in Gracier have displaced some 4,400 people. Nearly three quarters of them are now sheltering with host families, with others seeking refuge in seven makeshift displacement sites. This brings the total number of people newly displaced in Port-au-Prince in the past two weeks to nearly 10,000. More assessments are being carried out, and OCHA is liaising with its partners to coordinate the ongoing response. UNICEF and its partners have reached more than 50,000 displaced children and families impacted by attacks since late February through their mo mobile clinics in Port-au-Prince. Karim Khan, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, briefed the Security Council on the court's work concerning Libya. He told the council there was enthusiasm for the, the prosecution to open an office in Tripoli. He added, however, that a paradigm shift is still needed and the, the rule of law must apply in Libya. And this afternoon, the Security Council will hold a meeting on Ukraine. Lisa Doughton, the director of the Financing and Partnerships Division of the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, is expected to brief council members. Thank you. The Under Secretary General for Peace Operations, Jean Pierre Lacroix, is in Qatar, where he engaged today with government officials to discuss peacekeeping related matters as well as mine action. Tomorrow, Mr. Lacroix will arrive in Afghanistan, where he will raise awareness on the impact of explosive ordnance, including on Afghan communities. He will be in the country until the 17th of May and will be accompanied by the Director of the United Nations Mine Action Service, Eileen Cohn. Mr. Lacroix, also ex aims to explore avenues for effective strategies to clear explosive ordnance from Afghan communities. Afghanistan's people are threatened by mines, and 81% of the 821 explosive ordnance casualties reported in Afghanistan between January 2023 and March 2024 were children. The personal envoy of the Secretary General on Cyprus, Maria Anhala Holguin, has this week concluded her third visit to the island, as well as visits to Ankara and Athens. As she informed the media on Cyprus on the 13th of May, she will soon begin to prepare her report to the Secretary General with her findings and will discuss with him the way forward. In the meantime, she continues her efforts to search for common ground. This morning, the Secretary General addressed by video message the annual meeting of the Economic and Social Council Operational Activities for Development segment. He said that we stand at a pivotal moment in our journey towards the 2030 deadline for the Sustainable Development Goals adding that the UN development system, led by resident coordinators, is critical to getting us there. Last year's SDG summit called for a rescue plan and the UN is shifting gears to accelerate action. We are supporting the capacity development of countries, including efforts to strengthen policy and regulatory environments. 
At the same time, the Secretary General told member states that he is deeply concerned about the system's funding, adding that securing sustainable and predictable funding is his main priority for the system this year. And last, we're getting regular budget dues today from two of the world's landlocked nations. We are fortunate to have two checks, one from the smallest landlocked country, uh, one, uh, one of the smallest landlocked countries in Europe at approximately 468 square kilometers. Any guesses? Andorra. What? It, you're, who, you're, you're right. Who said Andorra? You are going to get the first question today. Uh, and now we'll battle for the second question. The second <laughs> payment is from a landlocked country in East Asia, bordered by Russia to the north and China to the south. That, that, was, that was an easy question. Who, who said that one? Both of us. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll, 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 give, I'll give you second and third, respectively, then. OK. Um, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, that, that is Mongolia. We thank our friends in Andorra La Vía and Ulaanbaatar for taking us to 110 fully paid up member states. And as I promised, Abdel Hamid. <laughs> um, thank you very you're, you're much. You're quite a community of co correspondents. Being a true gentleman. <laughs> um, Farhan, yesterday you said that 360,000 uh, Palestinians had fled Rafah. I believe you said just now that it was 450. Thousand? Yes, th is those are the figures from the Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA. Yeah, near, it's nearly 450,000, although I expect to get to that number sometime over the course of the and day. And this is all since uh, since the offensive, the, la the yes. latest offensive Exactly, began. Since, the, since the latest offensive. Okay, so yesterday you said that 100,000 um, people had fled the north. Is there any update on... How many people have fled the north by today? I, I don't have a new figures for the north. We, we expect that there's more uh, going on uh, in terms of departures from the north, given uh, the increased fighting, uh, which is why we issued the statement that the Secretary General has just put out. Uh, but, uh, but I'll see whether we can get some figures over the next uh, day or so in terms of departures from the north as well as from the south. OK, and a second question. Um, on the U.S. pier, can you tell us whether the United Nations is going to be involved in any way in the distribution of the aid that's being brought in by sea? Well, this is, this is something we're, we're certainly discussing uh, with the, the relevant authorities. So we'll see what role we have. We, we do intend to play a role uh, and we're determining how to do that in a way that uh, uh, fully respects uh, the integrity and neutrality of our operations. And is there any indication of when this decision might be made? Uh, we're in constant talk, so as, as soon as we can do it, we will. Uh, Abdel Hamid and then Deji. And then Thank you, Farhan. Uh, this morning, the settlers stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque they raised the Israeli flag inside the mosque. Are you aware of that? And what do you say to this? Yes, oh, we're, we're aware of these reports, which are very disturbing. Uh, as you know, we always have called for and continue to call for respect for the status quo uh, at all of the holy sites in Jerusalem. And we do so again today. My second question, Farhan, you keep repeating the same thing. We call on Israel to do, to respect civilians, to prosecute those who violate international law, to do this, to do this. But you know, and we, the whole world knows, that Israel will not do that. What is other than just appealing to Israel to respect international humanitarian law or international law? And you know they don't. Uh, I don't think it's as simple as that. Uh, different countries uh, are ones in which we sometimes have difficulties uh, in dealing with them as, as we strive to make sure that all international norms are respected. Over time, we do deal with all of the countries in the system, and the reason the international norms are in place is that countries do understand the need uh, to respect and uphold them, and we believe that uh, the, 
the efforts we make uh, are ultimately uh, ones that will be productive. Uh, Deji. Yeah, first, they follow up on the US peer. Uh, you said uh, the UN is in constant communication and talks with the counterpart, uh, relative part parties. But the thing is, the news told us it will be operating in days. D do you do you f do you believe you can finish this talk I within days on the role of the U UN? Uh, I don't want to put a timeline on uh, the talks. Uh, we've been conducting so you, you them. We've been conducting them very seriously and at very senior levels. And uh, and certainly, if if all the parties are willing to. Uh, meet each other, uh, as uh, this can be done uh, in fairly short order. So, so UN will, let me put it this way. So UN could uh, play its role on that pier, but not necessarily in the very beginning once the, the, uh, of the operation of that pier, right? Uh, let's not, uh, like I said, let's not prejudge. Uh, the talks are ongoing and we'll see once they, they can come to a result. Okay, another follow up. Uh, another follow up. Uh, do you have more, maybe, maybe I missed this part. Do you have more information on the, um, the international casualty in Gaza? On that, uh, which nationality can you tell us? And, and what, what is the, what is the, the, the situation there, who, who did the attack? Uh, at this stage, regarding who did the attack, I can't, uh, you know, I don't, uh, uh, I can't really s say that. Uh, what I can tell you about in terms of determining responsibility is that the UN has established a fact-finding panel. It's very early in the, in the investigation and details of the inc incident are still being verified with uh, the Israeli Defense Force. Um, what we know so far indicates that a weapon appears to have impacted the back of a white UN vehicle carrying two UN staff members, killing one and injuring another. The, staff, the, the deceased staff member uh, has been identified. Uh, he is Webav Anilkale uh, of India, and we send our condolences uh, to his family. Uh, uh, how, how, the wounded one? What? The wounded, uh, the, the wounded one is, is from Jordan. We're, uh, we're awaiting her recovery. How, how many, do you know how many international staff still are there in Gaza? Uh, yes, I have, that, I have that figure. And can you confirm this is the first international casualty? The, this is the first, uh, as I pointed right. out yesterday, it is the first okay. uh, international ca casualty. Uh, international staff in Gaza is currently at 71. 71. Okay, uh, one last question. Okay, okay, but but really, let's let's move oh, right, it around. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's move it around now. We can come back to you, Tarek. Yes. Oh, oh sorry, Jordan. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I, I'm, you just heard something about settlers. Um, does did, it, did you just said that does the SG condemn the settler attack on humanitarian convoys going to Gaza? Yes, sir. This is what you just said. We, yes, uh, of course. We are, we are opposed to all of the attacks uh, on humanitarian convoys, uh, whether by settlers or anyone else. Uh, but th I want to underscore to everyone how serious it is that at a time when people are in danger of starving to death, there's no excuse for blocking or, uh, or uh, attacking uh, different convoys as they try to get food to those in need. To me, um, can you tell me like the situation of the Jordanian international staff? It's like how it's moderate, it's uh, uh, that, that, slight. The, how 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 that, that that person was injured. Uh, she is receiving hospital uh, care. Uh, we hope the no, we hope what and kind expect. Of care? Is she is in ICU or she just fine? Do you know? I, I wouldn't give that detail on her status. Uh, she's receiving medical attention. We we believe that she will make it through. Uh, Gabriel. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, some of my questions have already been answered, but I'll have a couple follow-ups. Um, so the UN is in contact with Israeli officials about the incident, correct? Yes. And does that mean that Israel has... Does that mean that Israel has... The, the shots fired were from Israel and it's just a matter of the circumstances, or are you still trying to determine if the shots came from Isra an Israeli personnel or not? I, I think uh, the point is we are in discussion with Israel to uh, determine exactly how 
uh, this incident happened in the nature of what happened. Uh, I don't think uh, I uh, I don't think at this stage we are um, in doubt about uh, where the shots came from as much as what the circumstances were. Where did they come from? Uh, we we believe it came from a tank in the area. Okay, and um, what were the um what was, when they were going to the European hospital, what was the purpose of that uh, convoy to go to the hospital? Do you, do you know any more detail on that? There, there's, there's regular work that's going on in terms of uh, bringing people to different sites, and, and this was part of that. Last follow-up, if I may, going to the, um, um, the settler attacks on the, on the aid convoys that you spoke about already, are you also in contact with Israeli officials about using their security personnel to stop such attacks because there were reports that uh, Israeli security personnel uh, watched it take place without intervening. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone uh, in a position of responsibility take up their responsibilities to make sure that humanitarian aid can go to those who need it. Uh, yes, Maggie and then Volodymyr. Thanks, Farhan. Uh, continuing on the attack yesterday on the two uh, UN staffers, um, this fact-finding panel that you mentioned, who, who's on it? Like, who, is it a DSS thing, or like who, how many people, where are they from? Uh, we don't give started? out the, the, the details of this, but yes, it's basically something that's being set up by the Department of Safety and Security. And the Jordanian uh, staffer who was injured, is she in hospital in Gaza, or were they were able to evacuate her to Jordan? Uh, or she, Jerusalem? Uh, she, she's not in Gaza right now. No, she, but, but she is in, uh, she does, uh, she is receiving her hospital care. Uh, okay, uh, hold on. I have you listed. Vol Volodymyr first, and then Benno. <clears throat> Thank you, Farhan. Quite a, a different question. Uh, in the Caucasus, uh, the Georgian parliament today adopted, in its final version, a law on so-called foreign agents, similar uh, to Russian, Russia's. Tens of thousands of people in the capital, Tbilisi, are protesting, and the police have resorted to violence. What can the Secretary General say about that? Uh, yes, what I can say on that is that the Secretary General is following with concern developments in Georgia, particularly the violent clashes and reports of disproportionate use of force by law enforcement personnel against demonstrators protesting against the draft law on transparency of foreign influence. The Secretary General echoes the concerns of the UN country team in Georgia and the High Commissioner for Human Rights on the negative impact the law may have on the freedom of expression and the media and on civil society in general. He calls for restraint and dialogue between the authorities and civil society, as well as prompt investigation of all allegations of ill treatment during or after protests or in detention. Uh, Benno. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> another follow-up to the incident in Gaza. You said um, you think that the shots were fired from the direction of a tank. Am I right that only the IDF have tanks in the region? I think that's a safe assumption to make, Yeah, yes. but I had to ask it, I think. Um, secondly, can you confirm that one of the uh, victims had a double nationality? Uh, I, I don't have a confirmation of that. Uh, the, 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 the person who died is an Indian national. Uh, that, 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 that's as much as I can establish. And oh, I forgot my third one. Sorry. We can we can come back around to you, uh, Tarek and Danidi. Uh, sorry, Jordan. I'm sorry. Sorry, I misnamed you twice. It's okay. Um, I, I know you since 1993, <laughs> and you still forgot my name. It's okay. Um, do you know how many? I, I mean, first of all, is there any uh, UN presence in El Fasher? and how many international staff there, and how safe are they? Uh, I, I do not believe that we have a presence in, in, in El Fasher itself, but I'll, I'll check uh, and see whether that's the case. And the second, the second fellow up, if you allow me, you said Mr. Lacro in Qatar, and he's going to Afghanistan, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And can you tell us how he's going to Afghanistan? Is it commercial flight or? Um, how, how he's going there? We don't, we don't give out detailed uh, uh, travel arrangements, but yes, uh, we expect by plane. Yes, Edie. Um, thank you, Farhan. On um, the issue of fuel getting into Gaza, 
Um, is there any update on how much is left and whether any fuel trucks have managed to get in today? Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's been no, uh, there's been no transit of fuel trucks today. Uh, uh, we've had a small amount of fuel, but we've been rationing it. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, I'll try to provide an update for you by tomorrow in terms of whether we can get more fuel in. Uh, Deji. Just a quick follow-up with the idiot question. Do you have any trucks today entering uh, Gaza from the UN? I, I didn't receive any information on new fuel trucks going in. Uh, so, so, others? So, so. Other humanitarian deliveries? Uh, next. Uh, put it this way. As far as I know, Rafa as an opening is closed. Uh, there's been problems getting uh, aid through Karim in Karim Shalom Shul. in a way that we can transit it outwards. So, Air so right Aries? now, things are at a standstill. Aries? It's uh, north. There, there may be some activity at, at areas, but I'm not aware of it. Uh, Abdul Hamid and then Maggie. Thank you. I have a question on Karim Khan's, Karim Khan's speech. Uh, you don't have to answer, but I have to ask. Yeah. The two, two points were missing. He didn't mention anything about the threats he received from the U.S. That in his speech. In his right of reply, he mentioned that because he was asked about it. And second, he did not mention whatsoever what's going on in Gaza. What do you think of that? Uh, well, the, the topic at hand was Libya. But beyond that, uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, uh, I don't speak for uh, Karim Khan, who is part of the International Criminal Court, which is independent of the United Nations. Why he didn't meet with the press? I know that he was contacted and he denied he, he turned down the offer. Why? Uh, well, that, that's his choice. Uh, as as, as uh, they say in parts of America, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Um, Maggie, and then, uh, and then Jordan again. Uh, I know there was a briefing in Geneva, so sorry if this might have been covered there. But um, the two UN staffers involved in the accident or incident yesterday uh, in Gaza, what were their actual job titles? Like, what were they... I, I mean, they were part of the Department of Safety and Security, so, so they both work uh, with DSS. In security jobs? No, they, they have security jobs, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, Mr. Yeah. Farhan, Jordan. Uh, the DSS the office in Gaza, uh, who are their boss? Who are they reporting to? Uh, well, DSS obviously reports to the head of DSS here in New York, but uh, in terms of who they report to in Gaza, as you know, there's there's the the humanitarian coordinator who deals with Gaza. Uh, yes. Thank you, uh, Fran. A lot of the questions about the incident yesterday have been asked, in which the Indian uh, colonel uh, passed away, was killed. Um, would you have any other numbers as to how many personnel from India or, uh, are are stationed there, or are part of the DSS or other UN agencies? Uh, I don't. I don't have a breakdown by nationality uh, of staff. Uh, like I said, there's uh, 71 international uh, staff in Gaza, but uh, but uh, uh, we don't. You know, we don't have nationality breakdowns. So that 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 fluctuates from time to time. Right. Obviously, we, we appreciate uh, the contribution that India has made, and, 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 we re and we also express our, our apologies and our condolences uh, to the, the government and people of India. Thank you. Uh, Gabriel and then Benno. Thank you, Farhan. Has Israel apologized to the UN? Uh, like I said, this, this, this uh, case is still under review. Uh, yes. Um, now it came to my mind what I wanted to ask. Um, do you see this attack as a deliberate attack on the UN? Uh, I, the, the point I'm making is that this, this case is still under review. We'll see what the, the review uh, results in. Okay, and you mentioned how these cars were marked. Um, is there like any reason to believe that could, they could have been mistaken or anything? Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Again, as the review proceeds, we'll need to see uh, what the precise nature of the circumstances were. And with that, I wish you all a good afternoon, and we'll see you tomorrow. No, no, um, what on, no, Monica. What about question online? What? I, I was, did you have question, question online? online. Oh, sorry. Sorry, who's that? Stefano. Okay. This is Stefano. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, someone, someone just had the question. Yeah, what's your, what's your question, Stefano?
Well, I, I'm. Thank you, Farhan. I'm here outside the Trump's trials. Uh, here happened something extraordinary. The uh, uh, still, wait, 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 Steph, Steph, no, Steph, no, L please, let me stop you right there. If this is a question about the Trump trials, I've got nothing to say. No, 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 it's not about the Trump trials. It's about the Speaker of Congress that just spoke here to journalists, and he said that all the, the justice system is corrupt and the democracy is in danger, uh, and no, he's uh, talking uh, about uh, like no. with, well, with, with, with respect, with respect, this is this the is, world. Is, this That's is a line the Secretary of questioning General that has an opinion of what's happening, not the trial. St Stefano, please, 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 please. With, with, with respect, this is not a line of questioning that I will entertain. Have a good day now. Bye.